So are you ever in a scenario where you had a PBR texture and couldn't change its color? Well, with this update it's finally possible to add tint to PBR textures that are used in surface appearances. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support your channel and let's get into the video. And now this update focuses more on the surface appearance instance that's used to create PBR textures on meshes. And if I take this model for example and go to its surface appearance, there is going to be the new color property under the appearance. And what this essentially is, this property is basically tint. And what this is going to do to the model is that if I for example take the yellow value, this is going to multiply the texture of the surface appearance color map with the applied color that we added in this property. So you can see that the slime is basically blue, but if I add yellow, it's going to create green. And that's because yellow combined with blue basically just makes the green color value. And now this feature is only available in studio for now and doesn't work in live games. And that's because if I go to the deform post, there are going to be some known issues. Mostly for Rojo. But basically, Roblox will release this to work on the client on August 22nd. And I'm going to link this deform post in the description so you can read all about this. But this just shows you the usage, explains the color multiplier, where you multiply the selected color with surfaces appearance color. And there is also a scripting paragraph where you just modify it basically as every single other property and the surface appearance color is a color free type value. And of course there is also performance and memory. And someone might also ask why is this update basically good, right? And I need to show two points with this. Previously this was kind of possible if the texture was set to an overlay and also had an alpha channel. But instead of changing the color of the surface appearance, you were able to change the color of the mesh itself. Like this. And how that would work would basically, if I just copy the color map from the surface appearance and just add a screen GUI and then an image label, then just assign the image and then add some background transparency. Now this is basically the texture of this pillow. And because of it being transparent, like I said, you were able to change the color of the pillow. And now because the alpha mode is set to an overlay, if this was set to transparent, it will basically just break the whole thing. But you basically just get the idea. Previously we just had a workaround that would do the similar thing, except it wouldn't really work on non-transparent parts. So that's for my first point, right? And the second point, if you wanted to change the color of, for example, these leaves, I'm actually just going to revert this to the original color, if you wanted to change this color, since this is already set to transparent because, well, this is leaves, if I change it to the overlay, you can see that it's not really going to work properly, but you would basically have to export the texture into a different program like Photoshop or GIMP, then mess around with the hue values there and then import the texture back into Roblox. And now thanks to the color property of the surface appearance, we don't really need to do that anymore. We can basically just mix these values to make the leaves, let's say, more orange, if it was an asset for like a autumn season, or maybe make them a little bit darker, just depending on our environment. And now let's also say that I had this tree for example and this would be an alright tree but it wouldn't really fit into like a more brighter environment where everything else would be let's say more saturated. Now the color property would allow me to mix basically just green with a bit lighter green and now this would add more contrast to the leaves of the tree. So it would go from this to basically this. And now let's also take one of Roblox's assets for example, where I would want to change this tree, which is basically like a alien tree from the space station asset pack, and I wanted to make it look like a normal tree. So I would just remove the veins as well as some of the lights from here. And same with these veins right here. So now I would only have the trunk and the leaves, where the color of the leaf texture is actually pink. So now I could change this value to mix pink with green again, to basically make the leaves green. And I could also change the color of the tree trunk to be more like orange or brown. Like so. So this basically just adds a lot of asset modification where you could make one thing look different in basically many different ways by just changing the tint of the color. And also the same thing would go if you wanted to reuse this asset 
if you had let's say an RPG world and you would basically just do an asset flip where you wouldn't have to make the texture for every single tree in let's say every single biome, you could only have one texture and rules change its tint again. So that would be a pretty huge quality of life improvement. And I'm also going to show an asset on where not to exactly use this feature, where I'm going to show the example of the texture on this dumpster. So if I just change the color to make the dumpster, let's say, more green, this is going to look fine on the dumpster itself, but not really on the caution and warning plates right here. Because if I just go all around it, you can basically see that there is nothing wrong with the metal, but these signs don't really look too right. And do you guys remember how I mentioned that this is basically mixing the first color with the second color. Now you probably noticed that the top of the dumpster didn't really change and that's because it's black. Now the mixing isn't going to work if you try to mix any color with black because the black is just going to overtake the value. And the same thing kind of goes for the white color but in reverse where if the texture was white the mix would be basically the value that you selected on the color property. And you can see from this example how the white part of this label is basically changing to the color I select. And lastly, I'm going to show this example on my own asset pack, where every single one of these assets is using a PBR texture. And you can get this asset pack by becoming a channel member with a tier 2 subscription. And there is also a free sample available and I will link it down in the description. But let's just take this steel drum for example which is full on green. If I go to the surface appearance and change the color property to maybe something like more bluish, I can just simply change its color like this instead of having to go to Photoshop, recolor the texture there, import it back into studio and then make another asset. So you can see how something like this is pretty handy. And another example that I can show is going to be the shovel, where again I could make the metal a little bit more bluish, and this would give a bit more saturation to the whole asset. And also since this palette is really rough, if I were to change this color to basically just be pitch black like this, it kind of gives like this scorched, burned wood vibe, so you could use this asset for like a horror game. And now this is also going to work on like different materials, for example with all of these metals right here. If I wanted to make it more golden, let's say, you can see all of them changing. And you can see a bit more of a difference on the material that has more white colors. So if I wanted to make everything red, I would basically just leave it like this. And the same thing is also of course going to work on like these rusted metal materials. And for something like a concrete, because this is basically just more greyish, and if you change this to like anything like highly saturated, it wouldn't really work out. But if you just wanted to change the color a little bit, you could for example just add a little bit more yellow value on around 50 saturation, and then just scale it down. And now this sewer pipe, like, I mostly thought about this being like laying down in the construction somewhere basically like this but if you change the color to this this would fit more for like a sewer environment but yeah that is basically going to be everything for today so go check out my ugc items and also join my robots group but yeah thank you for watching hope everyone has a nice day and see ya guys